Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Just recently, iRacing revealed the 2022 special event calendar and I thought that would be the perfect time to go through it and see what the upcoming year has in store for us as this upcoming season has arguably the most changes in the schedule for the past few years, especially regarding cars to compete in these events. In total, we end up with three 24-hour events spaced out across the year, along with two 12-hour events that run just a month apart from one another. Beyond that, there are 10 hour races such as the event at Suzuka, timed events that go for 6 hours like the Watkins Glen event, and lapped counted races like the Bathurst 1000 that will also see the drivers ticking past the 6 hour mark. This season truly is a season to challenge your endurance, however, before we get into the more detailed overview of the events, I must break everyone's hearts first. There is one glaring omission from this list for yet another year in the form of the 24 hours of Le Mans. Of course, I'm sure many of us know why, but this remains a clear missing puzzle piece from the upcoming schedule. The year's first event in mid-January is a returning favourite, the iRacing Raw before the 24. The event was a favourite for many years before disappearing off the calendar in 2019, however it returns in a new look this year. Now featuring the GT4 class of cars, the Audi TCR and the MX-5, you can be sure that this event will be the perfect warm-up for the year ahead. This event used to contain the Kia Optima and the Ford Mustang alongside the MX-5, so it will be an exciting event to see how the new class structure takes on the high banks of Daytona. But of course, the main point of the iRacing Raw is to act as a precursor to perhaps the most renowned special event of the year, the iRacing Daytona 24 but that could be me being biased towards the event after our 2019 victory in which our Altus Esports cars took class wins in two of the three classes. However, there is a new look for the event this year. This event's class structure is based on the IMSA class, which is changing for 2022. The GTE class is no longer, which is reflected in the special event calendar, with only LMP2 cars and a select handful of GT3 vehicles scheduled to take to the grid in late January. It'll be a very different traffic flow compared to previous years, but 10 more LMP2 and GD3 cars in each class are sure to spice things up. And just in case you're not quite sick for Daytona just yet, how about you take on the Daytona 500 in the middle of February, which again features a new look race. New for 2022 in NASCAR is the next gen vehicles. These cars have been on the sim for the past few seasons now and have had a primarily skeptical reception. But if you want to win the crown jewel event in NASCAR racing, you're going to have to get to grips with these brand new cars. Finally moving away from Daytona, we head to the Australian battleground of Mount Panorama. 12 hours on the clock through the early morning and late afternoon, dodging walls on either side of this concrete jungle. This event is mainly unchanged from previous years, but don't expect that to make life any easier in this punishing affair. So often, we see drivers battling adversity and finishing races in less than ideal conditioned cars. If there is an event on this schedule that you could be forgiven for breaking some carbon fibre, this is that very event. A four week break then takes place before we all meet up once again at the Sebring 12 hours. Like the Daytona 24, this event follows the IMSA class system, meaning only the LMP2 and GT3 cars will be taken into the grid. This event is a favourite for many and is always highly competitive as drivers battle it out over the car breaking bumps, hoping to buy themselves a ticket for that final hour battle for the win. In the middle of April, we head to the special event with the most car classes of the year. The Nürburgring 24 is well known in the real world of motorsports for having some monumental grid sizes, always in excess of 100 cars. Whilst we can't pull off 100 cars or more on the iRacing servers, 14 GT3 Porsche Cup and GT4 cars with some Audi TCR sprinkled on top, you had better believe this event will continue to be the traffic nightmare it has always been. The pace picks up from there as the special event schedule takes us to Indianapolis for two consecutive weeks. First up in the month of May is the fixed Indianapolis 500, where drivers are all running identical setups and the only factor in getting across the line first is the driver. The very next week though, is the one many IndyCar racers worldwide have penciled in from the very start. 
It is their biggest event of the year, and you had better believe it will be a fantastic event, as they try and eke out every thousandth of a second around this famed oval. In May, the NASCARs return as well to make it three special events in three weeks as they head to the Coke 600 at Charlotte Motor Speedway. These next-gen cars seem to be far more stable overall than their Gen 6 counterparts, but how will that play into things as they take on the longest race of the year? The first half of the schedule ends at the six hours at the Glen special event which uses the IMSA format once again. This event hasn't always been the most popular on the schedule, but maybe a new Watkins Glen track scan could change things up. Please I racing, we beg of you. The second half of the year mixes up the pace quite differently though with a broader variety of cars and event formats being used. The last of the three 24 hour events of the year kicks off for the Spa 24 hours in late July, consisting of a mammoth 55 strong GT3 grid. With only 100 instants to play with over 24 hours, this event will push you and the track limits to the extreme. Next up in August is one for the Dirt fans, the Knoxville Nationals in the 410 Sprint Cards. This event will be wild with a Super Session format meaning it will be a full week of action. I've never been able to drive a Sprint Car to save my life, but even I am keen to jump on and sling some dirt sideways in this event. The penultimate NASCAR event of the year is the Bristol 500, an event that can leave you feeling dizzy in no time at all. Ultra high banking, super fast next gen NASCARs and 500 laps? It's a recipe for disaster and that is the very reason so many people love it. It is an art form to run so close to the outside wall for so long and never touch it, but the NASCAR pros will surely make it happen. On that very same weekend though, there was a very different type of race going on, the iRacing Bathurst 1000 and the Australian V8 Supercars. This event is always a challenge as the Australian sim racing community comes out in force to often dominate the event. Although, it must be said that we have seen several strong international wildcard teams over the past, so is this the year the internationals can finally beat the Australians at their very own game? The final IMSA event of the year takes us to the phenomenal Petit Le Mans event at Road Atlanta. This year's event was a classic and I'm sure 2022's event will be just as good. The traffic situation will change with the loss of the GTE cars, meaning those pesky LMP2s will have many more GT3 cars to get stuck behind, plunging down the downhill essence. In late October, we throw ourselves in the dirt for the second time this year with the Crandon Championship in the brilliant Pro 4 trucks. I was devastated not to take part this year as a clash with the Rallycross World Championship, but next year, you can bet you'll be seeing an 06 Altus truck on that starting line. This event is one that everybody should get behind as you find yourself attacking the land rush start into a super fast opening corner before launching yourself many, many, many feet over the jumps side by side with other trucks. Come on, it doesn't get much better than that. The final NASCAR event of the year is the season closer, the championship race at Phoenix which itself just recently got a major visual overhaul to bring it up to the 2021 standards. The track looks great, and the scene will be set for a great ending, I'm sure, to the NASCAR Next Gen's debut campaign. With that, we head into our final three events of the year. Our last event of the year in GT machinery finds us at Suzuka for the Suzuka 10 Hours. This event debuted in 2021 to great success, so it's terrific to see it return for a second year. Managing traffic and equal machinery through the S's was a big challenge for drivers and generally being able to fuel save to the hour mark. With the year of experience under everyone's belt now though, the 2022 event should be closer than the last. The penultimate event of the year is the iRacing Winter Derby in the Super Late Models. This event took place literally as I'm making this video and I have to say the racing is pretty damn good. I wasn't sure what to expect but these cars race very well and 300 laps around here doesn't look all too bad so maybe just maybe I'll make an appearance next year. But with that we find ourselves at December 18 and the event is the iRacing Chili Bowl Nationals in the Dirt Midgets. It's a crazy event that sees some of the most out of control, loose racing of the year and I think it is the perfect send off to what I'm sure will be a fantastic 2022 season. So that's the calendar for the year, so now I'll put the spotlight on you guys watching this. 
One event sticks out to you guys the most regarding changes for the upcoming year, and which ones are you looking most forward to when it comes time for racing? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for watching the video. I know it's a longer video, but I hope you've enjoyed this overview of the upcoming season calendar. If you like these kind of videos, by all means do let me know, it really helps me know what to make going forward. Hopefully I can make some content moving forward as well about helping you guys improve as drivers too, with some lessons I've learned in my now 9 years sim racing career. Oh boy, I'm getting old. If you did enjoy it though, be sure to hit that subscribe button and hey, share the video around so everyone is up to speed with what the new year has to bring. But until then, I'll see you all next time.